All right, so is Robin Hood setting up for a bull run? Are they getting prepared for something that could be very unique in the crypto space? We're going to break all that down for you guys today. You're going to love it. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back on the Tech Path. Before we get started, thanking our sponsor, that is iTrust Capital. If you guys are looking at long-term holding and you want to do it in an IRA, this is one place you can do it. And of course, with iTrust Capital, you can do this by either locking up your ETH, your Bitcoin, put it in an IRA. It's self-directed, so you're only making trades within the IRA itself, and that's the only time you're going to incur fees. So make sure and check it out. It's absolutely no monthly fees. All you have to do is use our link down below, get a $100 funding reward if you guys, you guys decide to go that direction. All right, so a couple of things I want to hit on here. This is Kobe Easy uh, hitting up on Robinhood. Robinhood did their earnings yesterday, if you guys uh, heard. They missed. I'll show you some stuff around that. But there may be a silver lining in this, and I want you to kind of follow along here. So stock officially traded below 10 bucks, uh, 10 down uh, on the share after missing earnings. Uh, interestingly, Robinhood also noted a major slowdown in retail trading activity, obviously for most of the activity around crypto that's really reduced. And I think also retail traders, in, in essence, have also been damaged to a certain extent. Uh, but their transaction-based revenue decreased 11% year over year, 185 million. Trading platform monthly active users dropped 16%. That's the bigger number that I don't necessarily like, uh, down to, to 10.3 million. And volatility in the stocks and crypto have been cited as the potential drivers. Okay, that's kind of the known uh, area. And I think everybody that's following Robinhood probably understood that they were making a ton of money off of things like Doge and just crypto in general. And remember, they had to delist three of the biggest assets. And I'll talk about that in a minute, you know, this year. And that also, I think, affected them as well. Another tweet right here. I never quite understood Robinhood's business proposition. I want to play this, uh, this clip for you guys to listen in so people can kind of get a framework of how Robinhood is really set to make money in the future, because there's some things changing with them. Listen in. But how does it speak to what we're seeing uh, across platforms right now, where retail traders are concerned and where trading activity in this volatile environment is concerned? Well, to tell you frankly, I never quite understood Robinhood's uh, business proposition, because they have 10 million customers or 11 million customers and, and they keep reporting losses. We have uh, Interactive Brokers has two and a half million customers, and we have about $3 billion of profits a year. So I, I just don't see that. Gonna, I don't understand. That's okay. I, it's okay that you don't understand, because I think there's a silver lining in here of where this is going. I want to hit on a couple of headlines here. ARK is investing and betting big on Robinhood Coinbase with over a billion dollars invested. Now, you, many people will say, well, I don't trust Kathy. I don't, I don't think her you know, strategy is right. But I look at it this way. They, ARK, have been very forward about getting into innovation and really understanding where innovation is going. And that, I think, is the thing that Wall Street is missing here. I want to go to another uh, tweet right here. Now, this one goes uh, more of a flip side of the previous uh, clip you saw that they didn't understand the, the model. Listen into this one. It's a little different of a story. Um, because we, we did have this loss. We had had a profitable quarter last quarter. Um, monthly active users coming in below expectations. It looks like revenue is missing, even though those were up 29% year on year. And a lot of talk about higher rates offsetting the weaker volumes. But overall, we're continuing to see some of the activity on this platform sag. Is that the right way to think about this? I actually would think it looks better than meets the eye, or basically the results are actually better than people think. So if you think about those mouths, I think they declined about you know, 500,000. They went from 10.8 to 10.3. Mm -hmm. The decline is more muted than the decline between the first quarter and the second quarter. I think it went from 11 something to 10.8. So you're seeing like an abating of the decline. To me, that means the first derivative is turning positive. So I would actually be less negative on the results. I'm looking at you know, those like first derivative trends and they don't seem as bad. You know, they give you like every month, they give you the trending update. So there's not that much surprise here. They're kind of losing the element of surprise because everybody kind of knows what they're going to report. So it's more about these sort of intricacies. Okay. Is it a buy here then as the stock sells off? Oh, 100%. You own Robinhood for the future. You don't own it for like... All right. So own it for the future. And I think the key here with this, and this is something that Kathy Wood talks about a lot, and I'll show you some clips on her, is that there's something here that could be even bigger than maybe some of the crypto plays. So I think Robinhood is, is poising up nicely. There is some recent news, though, 
in the earnings call that I think is interesting. And I want you to listen into, we're going to have a few clips of Vlad, who is their CEO, who will talk about some of the things that are coming down the pipe, but also something to watch for that I'll see if you guys can catch it. But listen to this clip right here. Robinhood could be a great place for um, traders to benefit from the future Bitcoin ETF. Can you maybe talk a little bit about the opportunity uh, if it exists? Robinhood has been early to offer Bitcoin in its native form. Uh, Robinhood has really, really competitive pricing, but maybe customers aren't aware of that. So we're, we're looking to solve that problem. We believe we have solved it. For our crypto customers, we've rolled out some changes to the user interface on mobile so that customers can clearly see the spreads that we offer on our crypto transactions. This makes it easier for customers to see their all-in cost of execution, compare it against other platforms, and see how great of a deal Robinhood is giving them. All right, so I'm going to show you a screenshot of the mobile platform. And what you'll notice here is you'll see that the spread is identified now. So it gives you the actual spread within it. And this is super important. And here's the reason why. When you look at the ETFs that will happen, all right, they're coiling up for an ETF to hit the market. There's going to be new players coming into the to the space that are going to say, okay, I'll go with BlackRock, I'll go with Fidelity. And, and here's my fees. That's the key right there is where are the fees? So what Vlad is betting on is that maybe Robinhood wins the direct access to the asset with lower fees within the Robinhood app. So he may get a bump, he, Robinhood, may get a huge bump in trading activity around all of this just because they're going to be lining up fee-wise cheaper than Coinbase and then possibly going head-to-head -head with some of these ETFs of getting direct exposure to the asset. So that's something that to really uh, pay attention to. And as it plays out for them, and I think because they're focused on that, is pretty significant that they see something coming down the pipe. The other thing that's playing out right now is their strategy on a global perspective. Also in the coming weeks, we will launch crypto trading in the EU. Crypto benefits from a regulatory, relatively clear regulatory framework in the EU, and we're excited to bring our capabilities across the pond to better serve that market. And that's going to come right on the heels uh, of the UK brokerage launch. I'm just trying to understand in that context what kind of um, products or services um, that you could tangibly point to there. Would, would you envision kind of more uh, assets for trading um, in the EU than the U.S.? I, I really don't want to get ahead of the launch that's coming in a couple of weeks and tell you what the value props are going to be. But yes, in general, we do expect, given the clarity, to be able to offer uh, a different set of assets and capabilities in Europe as in the U.S. Within the EU, because of the regulatory framework, it's going to set up a very interesting opportunity for Robinhood. They could energize a lot more tokens back into the platform. Likelihood is we'll see, you know, the three horsemen, Cardano, including Polygon and Solana, make their way back onto the platform in Europe. And could they be setting that up here in the United States as well? Now, don't forget, just in, Bank of England now poses allowing stable coins as a payment option for goods and services. This is huge for what's going to happen in the EU. And again, that gets back to the whole point. Will Robinhood be a successful platform in terms of, an, uh, of a trading exchange within the EU? Very active overall, if you just think about the UK in general, much less some of the other uh, emerging countries around financial services. Robinhood could end up leading the way there. This could be a big, big bonanza for Hood. And I think with Coinbase, they've already kind of gone that direction. Now, of course, with all that happening and the good stuff, Here's the bad stuff. Right now, U.S. Treasury official says Biden is wanting to basically create new powers from Congress, Congress to crack down on crypto. So while everybody else is uh, moving on and starting to understand where the growth is going to be, right now we have the U.S. Uh, basically shooting ourselves in the foot. So this is a problem I think that we're going to have to face. At some point, Congress will be able to address this, I think, that or an election. Next thing up here I want to hit on is getting Robinhood to talk about delisting de and relisting tokens. Listen in. Taking the other side of that, looking at the U.S. market, you know, you guys recently delisted some of the crypto assets. What would give you comfortability to, to relist some? Yeah, it's, it's hard, hard to say what specifically we're waiting for to give us comfort. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, rules, uh, 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 
uh, rulemaking, um, court case data, that, that all helps. Um, and of course, um, we'll continue to push for regulatory clarity because I think it would be a shame for the innovation that we've been seeing in crypto to be co-opted uh, overseas. I think it's, it's very, very important for the U.S. to remain a leader in every new technology and industry that we possibly can. Now, remember, all the way back here in June of 2023, this is when Robinhood ended support for Solana, Polygon, and Cardano. And this, of course, was because of the SEC's crackdown on some of these additional tokens. Now, remember that. You take that, and then you take the opportunity of coiling up with what could be prepping for an ETF and or this, the win, obviously, with Ripple and most likely the Coinbase case that will be very critical of Robinhood being able to relist some of these assets and things change again over there. I want to go to a clip real quick. And this is talking about uh, how Kathy Wood perceives Robinhood as a growth vehicle. Listen in. Robinhood, along with Coinbase and Block, uh, the three of them we think are in the running for dominating, potentially, the digital wallet space. Robinhood is very user-friendly. It, it could become either the digital wallet, more likely it will become a part of a digital wallet ecosystem, either alone, standalone, or in partnership and in partnership with someone or as part of someone else. Taking a look at some of the stocks here, I just want to take a look at Coinbase. They had reported 674 uh, million in revenue. Their estimate was 650, so they over indexed there. That was great. If you look at Hood, just to give you an, an idea of what happened here on theirs, they had reported, reported 467 million. Uh, the estimate expectation was around 480. So that was the big problem. And obviously what you're seeing right now in terms of the stock bleeding out. So is this a time to look at Hood more of a long-term play? Maybe this is it. If you look at, and I'll go to the daily here and I'll really kind of squeeze out into time. And you can kind of see from where Hood has come from all the way down. We'll go up to back here in uh, 2021 when really they were at the peak of the market when all that Doge community was going like crazy. Bitcoin was flying. And of course, crypto services and crypto fees were being transactioned on uh, Robinhood in a big way. But the slide down, is this maybe the bottom? You know, the last time they hit this range was around 765 back in December of last year. And then prior to that, it was in June of 22. So very interesting positions right now for Robinhood. If in fact they are lining up for a bonanza around the ETF, and taking advantage of this next evolution of regulation. All this could be playing in. Make sure and stay tuned right here for all that good stuff. We'll continue to cover these kind of topics. If you guys are not in the Diamond Circle already, make sure and get in. It's another place where you can catch additional content. We have two podcasts over there now, and it, they're basically not available on YouTube. So you've got to go over there. Just visit the link down below. You can catch them there. If you guys want to catch me out there on X, it's at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.